Good day guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Ademola Badmos. In case if this is your first time, please do not forget to like and subscribe. Okay, so in this video, we are going to start the old Cypress script and in this first part, we are just going to establish a connection where we can actually send an email to the site where we are going to use, see that the email is typed there using the correct parameters the server ID and the and then by using the um, email domain okay so let's begin so um we are going to open our cypress and um let me just quickly write um, the required blocks and let me put the callback function mm, that is it I'm going to put some spaces here because I would uh, add some variables there. That's how I want to do it. So I'll make them global variables so you can always have access to them if you need them anyway, anyway, again. So here, let's say um, retrieving email tokens using mail or so. Mail token using mail or so, yeah. That should fit it. And then next one we create the eat block. And um here um um find up fill the sign up page fill the find up page. So I'm going to put the callback function as well. So the first thing I want to do, the next thing I will do actually, I've done the first thing obviously. So the next thing I will do is I'll start creating some variables here. So I'll call this one the server ID, right? Just hold on, I'm going to put the value there. And uh, the email domain, the email domain. We're going to put the value there so i can go here and um, copy this as the server id put that value here and um, go back again here and copy this as the email domain okay <laughs> so now that that is copied let me just paste that here okay so um no we don't need steady writing there that's all we need so with that done i would also leave another variable here let's just say email address so in case we have uh, more reasons let's we are uh, doing you can also try this on your own so that you have the email address there then you can do a forgot password feature but for this whole introduction i will just show you how you can use it to retrieve your email address so whilst i've done this i will um i've already set up the things i need on this page so i need to also set up some things here on the cypress config the first thing will be the base url the base url and that will be um, um the email that we are going to use the the um, browser that we are going to use i think that should be um uh, ah, what was it again let me look for it i was let me i think i copied it somewhere when i got it so I'm just going to look for it i think let me try to get to myself here. So I think it's example uh, mail or uh, yep. yeah, the, yeah, this fix it. So this is the page that we want to work with. So we're going to copy this and add that to the base URL. Then one other thing that we need here is the environment variable, right? where we will keep the 
API. Let's not forget. So we'll keep the API here. So we just say Melo Solo API key. And we'll put the value of the server API that we created. Remember that the server would only have access to the server alone. So go oh, come here so we can open it and we copy it so we put that in the value here and um, this is done let me just use the opportunity to add some other things like a default command timeout in an ideal situation i like to put the default command timeout at 15 seconds so that will be 15 milliseconds then um um okay let's leave it other configurations will be added when we want to do the next part of it so with this i think we are ready to start writing the codes that we need so in the first place so we have to create uh, the command that will visit the site since we've already added a url to the base url all we just need to do is just do this and to pick it from the base url and um, the next thing is um we need to get the email address so this is what i would want to do in this case i would like to make a bit of a difference with this why do i want to do that so basically you might um find yourself in a situation where <coughs> you might find yourself in a situation where for your use case you need unique emails at all times right the way Middlesbrough works is that you can just add anything in front and use the email domain and it will be fine. But let's say in your use case, you need unique emails at all times. A pretty neat trick I used to do is this. I just create a random string and this is what I usually use to create a random string. I will just, uh, sorry, create a random string and um, the random string will be used will be created using this right so i'll change that date to get time right so this will return a numeric value and this numeric value will be unique because it will pick the actual time as that as at that point so you know the same time cannot repeat itself so it will be unique so from there we can now um just go ahead and create the email so this is what the email will now look like. So the email will now look like this. Since we've already created um, a variable that is called email address, so we can say email address equals, um, let's put it together this way. So we, we do a, a bit of string manipulation. I have done this several before. So we do a, string, a bit of string manipulation. Say, so we say random string, and right beside it we will put the email domain we'll put the email domain as well so this will form the email address for us so we, will, we can begin to pick up our elements on the page let me just go ahead and uh, pick the elements on the page where is it so um i will do this and um, begin to pick one after the other so this one has an href i'll copy this and um this one has once i click it i have to also get the this the id and um, last name it's pretty, it's pretty this so i can just highlight on it and i'm getting the id so i just want to make it fast that's why i'm doing this otherwise i'm supposed to label them this way as in identify which one i'm picking but because i can see it already i know what it is like so this one is a button so i can go ahead and um, start creating so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create something that looks a bit unreadable okay then once i'm done with it and we've achieved it 
and I've done the second part and we've achieved it, then we'll now do something called code optimization where we'll keep all these elements into a fixtures folder and we'll use the fixture file in it. So, um, unlike the way I used to do it before that I would have first put it in the fixture folder, no, I will write it first, we will test it and once it works, we will now do a code cleanup. So, let's begin. So for the sign up page, um, we got this there. We got this one here. So we are going to. So once we've launched the page, we can get that and we verify that it is visible, right? Let's verify that it is visible. Then we click on it. And we click on it. Okay, so once we've done this, the next thing we'll do is uh, we want to fill the um, want to fill the first name. So the first name comes with um, this um, comes with this first name because we click the page and it's going to render a new page for us. Let us also verify that that page has become this. The element we are looking for on it is, has become visible before we type into it. So then we type, let's say John, right? So I can copy this. I'll paste it twice. So this one, I can change this first to last, okay? And we change this name to Do. Well, this one would be changed to email because it stands for the email. And we don't need a quote here. We will need the email address. And lastly, let me copy the click. We will do this. So we can remove this one now. Since we already verified one of the things there, I think the rest should be fine. So we don't need to do this twice. So then we do the same thing here. We just click the button as well. And what we just need is the button with the type. If you're wondering how I'm able to know all of this, I have done videos on it already. So you can check how this is created. Let me just confirm the submit button. Okay, it's a, cap it's a small letter S. Not a capital letter S, so we we'll do this. So we're going to use this to test and see if it can if it can type an email for us and all. So let's go back to our code and try. Okay, because we've made some changes in the Cypress config file, it has to restart itself. So this is the moment of truth. Let's see if this works. Okay. It works so it has inserted an email and everything works so so this brings us to the end of this video if you find this helpful and you could follow it through congratulations please do not forget to like and subscribe so we'll see in the next video to do the concluding part where we are, we are going to retrieve the email um what thing that is note of um, is worthy of note is that in the process of doing this Right. Do not forget, I've already mentioned that Melos can also help you. You can use Melos to also retrieve SMS. So you can use it for to create the SMS, to simulate the SMS scenario. But one thing that is worthy of note here is that in trying to do the next one, we are going to um, make some config modifications to our Cypress config as well. So it's not as if it's, going, it's just going to be business as usual. We'll make just one um, modification to our Cypress config and we'll continue from there. So thank you for getting this far. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.